Institute is a, a bridge uh, between the, the university and the community. It's also at the core of, uh, of the mission of NYU Abu Dhabi. So we started building bridges with the community because the lectures we put on were essentially for the community. Our aim was, of course, it always has been to reach out to Emiratis uh, in, the, in the public and private sectors to make Emiratis part of the conversation we were establishing. We invite up to 800 people, 800 international scholars, every single year uh, to gather in up to 30 conferences and workshops. So one can say that uh, part of our mission, but, and this relates directly to the mission of the university, is to um, bring international scholarship, international culture to the region. And the UAE is a great country uh, in facilitating us to do that. We stress is the fact that this is a research-based institution. So that the people we invite to speak are, are scholars, researchers, experts in their field. They're, people are pushing the envelope in their field. So whatever they speak about, they're providing insights to people. Advanced level research made accessible to the public. So the Institute uh, has several goals. An important one is outreach to a general public, uh, which is generally addressed by this uh, fantastic evening program that we run. Lectures about an hour and then you have a Q&A and people get very involved in what we as a community have to offer in terms of scholarship that is of interest to a wider public. And I'm confident that the Institute will continue to put on events on a par with the events we've put on in the past, the quality of the events will sustain that and, and why am I confident because this is a I mean the whole this this region this place this place in particular Abu Dhabi is, is, is growing developing there's so much more for us to draw on more students more faculty a growing community and obviously uh, issues that won't go away that touch us all these things don't go away so there's m more and more for us to talk about we really can promise, you know, a growing phase in the next 10 years. I'm not sure whether I'm already live and whether all the other panelists... Ah, there's the more cameras on. Welcome, Omar Sultan, to the, uh, to the panel. Uh, welcome to everybody uh, on this webinar. Uh, of, about Afghanistan, uh, but also welcome to the, the first public talk of the NYU Abu Dhabi Institute, the 14th year uh, this, this season. And uh, as you have probably scrolled already through the events, it will be a very diverse and uh, cutting edge uh, talks about research in both the, 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 the humanities, science, social science, engineering, so the full package of a uh, liberal art college and research uh, university. Uh, welcome to, the, to this talk. My name is Robert Partesis. I'm a professor in heritage studies and I'm working at the Decker Center for, uh, for Heritage Studies here at NYU. And uh, we have the privilege to open uh, this uh, series of public talks with a public talk that is actually a continuation of a public talk that was uh, here on the same stage. Well, the virtual stage now, but the stage that you saw just on the video uh, seven years ago, November, December 2014, we had the same stage uh, to celebrate actually a conference that we that we organized, that the Institute organized about national museums as with the title as Peace Breakers or Peace Brokers. Uh, and the, the direct, uh, the direct reason for having that conference was that we were finishing a very successful eight-year program of collaboration with uh, the uh, partners in Afghanistan. Me first in my capacity as director of the Center for International Heritage Activities, but later on also in my um, uh, role as visiting professor here at NYU. Uh, at that moment, we had an, um, an, an yeah, a cheerful audience on the stage celebrating after three days of discussions about what the role of uh, national museums can play in in more diversity and also in unity in the countries and on the stage it was uh, our speaker of tonight omar sultan uh, his excellence omar sultan uh, deputy director of culture in afghanistan at that time now former deputy director of culture but we also had the director of the National Museum, uh, Dr. Masudi, 
uh, and the now director of the National Museum, Mr. Fahim. Uh, we also had Susanna Anne from Germany, who was special advisor to the to the uh, to the Ministry of Culture, and Biljana Volchevskia, who was uh, a co-organizer of that conference. Then, as I said, it was cheerful because Afghanistan had just 15 years of uh, rebuilding, rebuilding trust in uh, their own identity, rebuilding trust in the diversity that they are representing, and culture uh, played an immense role in it. I, I remember the topics of the, the evening were also the plans for the, 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 the new National Museum. There was a, a big competition uh, with prestigious museums to be built, but also feasting on the success that they achieved in uh, rebuilding their cultural infrastructure. And I think that is one of the most important things to, to remember that um, heritage and culture is not just the objects and the collections that, uh, that they stand for, it is also the connection of the people behind it. As we all know, uh, Afghanistan is uh, in a very uncertain time again. Uh, we don't know, nobody knows where it will go. But one of the reasons to have this public talk is also to take stake of what possibly uh, has been built as more resilient uh, infrastructure in the form of a, an, a cultural uh, professionals, uh, a community that understands better the importance of culture. And if I talk for myself, I, I was involved in that program um, it, it uh, was for me uh, a life-changing experience, simply because uh, if you do heritage studies, if you're an archaeologist, you know what it means to preserve something from the past and why you preserve it. But when you are exposed to a country as a post-conflict country then, Afghanistan, and you see what the role of uh, uh, heritage is for communities itself, uh, you see really how they can link their identity, but also, and that was the vision of the Ministry of Culture, uh, Omar Sultan and Dr. Masudi, to use that culture, not just to showcase treasures, but also to build unity. Um, that unity um, was in their vision, not just the, the museum in, in Kabul, it was also provinces in the in, uh, pro, uh, museums, national museums in the provinces. And, uh, again, I, I had the privilege to work on one of those projects. We were involved in a project in the north, and probably we were going to talk about it later on in this in this talk. For now, I, I want to introduce, although I did already, Omar Sultan in, an, in a more decent way. Uh, Omar Sultan's background is in, uh, in archaeology. That was uh, his passion. Uh, he started, he grew up in the Afghanistan of the 60s and the 70s, did his studies and then got in a long, long period of uh, that Afghanistan was in civil wars and in wars. And when he was asked in 2001, end of 2001, to come back and help to rebuild the country, he did hesitate a little bit, I think, uh, but uh, especially when he uh, entered Kabul, but he probably will explain more about it later in this talk, but he then said, well, if I have one opportunity to mean something for my country and for its long cultural heritage, then this is the opportunity that I should take and help to rebuild the country. I probably don't need more to say uh, before we're going to uh, listen to his introduction. And after the introduction, we have a, a, a short conversation about some of the aspects. And then Alia Yunus will uh, come online and do the public Q&A. Um, it's, it stays still funny to be in a webinar that you have no reaction from the audience, and, uh, but nevertheless, I know you're there, um, and I hope you enjoy uh, the, the public talk. Uh, I'm going to, shall I share the screen now, uh, Mr. Sultan? Yeah, sure. Please, go ahead. <laughs> uh, good afternoon. Uh, although it's over there, it's good evening, but... Good afternoon. Uh, I thank you very much, Professor Parteos. Uh, as usual, you are a man of uh, culture. Always you want to help the culture. Uh, I thank you from the bottom of my, my heart. <clears throat> anyway, today is a very sad day for me to talk about 
culture of Afghanistan because of the events of uh, what happened in my country. Uh, but I'm very glad that I talk with the University of NYU and people over there uh, so that I can share with you what, when I went back to Afghanistan, what I had in front of me uh, to work with and what I did in the last 20 years, but it is just like I am dreaming. I am in a dream and I'm sleeping and I'm seeing that we went back from 20 years and gave back Afghanistan to Taliban. <clears throat> uh, Afghanistan culture heritage and lands of people. You know, uh, at the time that I went, I was in a country that people were lost. Uh, they, because of the 40 years of war and everything else, uh, the people didn't know, they didn't, they did not have their identity. Uh, in order to do all, do all of these things, uh, I was thinking uh, that building a construction, a house, an apartment, or a fabric, whatever those things, it just will take some time, like you know, two years, one year, three years, four years. So, but I was thinking something else that always to me when I was back in 70s in Afghanistan, when I was young in Afghanistan, culture heritage actually united the people. Culture was something very, very important the Afghan people, the culture, heritage was their pride. And you know that Afghanistan is from different tribes, different ethnics. But when it came to culture, everybody was united. So that's why I talked with all my friends, including Kufai Sotakovs that let's do something about the culture, culture heritage. And of course, culture heritage, when you say culture and culture heritage, is not a really, really uh, easy thing to build. You have to go through all of a cycle and this and that. But anyway, uh, we start first from the, Museum. So, uh, can you show me the other uh, slide, please? Can you see the uh, slide which of the museum or? No, no let's be, uh, I mean, everybody knows, I guess, by that time that where is Afghanistan located. But as an archaeologist, uh, you, you can never talk without a map. <laughs> so that's why I basically put this map. So uh, please go to the other one. Can you change the other? Uh, yeah, this is the monarch of Jom. So the people of Afghanistan. And this is also one of the beautiful pictures, the valley. And this is the famous Boskashi and horsemen's. I don't know how much do you know, but today I think Afghanistan is right now, it's just a game of Boskashi. That there is a dead ship 
and everybody is trying to get that one and trying to pull it out. And that's it. And these are the reons of somewhere in Afghanistan and, and Helmand. Uh, can we go? Can you change the other slide, please? <clears throat> so that I can find the museum. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> I scroll and then you say stop, please. Okay, just here. <clears throat> Let's talk about uh, some archaeological sites. Uh, uh, for example, uh, the High Honom. Stop, stop right there. So uh, uh, the bacterium. Uh, so Afghanistan uh, is a, a country of the crossroads of culture. Uh, the culture, I mean, we have culture that I believe is culture heritage, which we have in Afghanistan that belongs to the whole humanity. Uh, so, for example, here, this is one of my excavation uh, in Hatta. So there is a Buddhist Hava in meditation. You will see right there on the right side of the Buddha is Hercules. This Hercules is guarding Buddha while the Buddha is in meditation. This Hercules is exactly like Hercules Epitrapezius, fifth century BC, but here is third century AD. So you will see how much is the Hellenistic influence was in our, uh, it was influenced even in Buddha's time and everything. And then you'll see here a lady with carrying all these foods and everything. And uh, can we go to the next one, please? <clears throat> Next slide, please. Okay, uh, Robert, can you please? Uh, so these are some Buddhist uh, pictures from Bagram. I mean, it's, uh, not pictures, uh, the artifacts from Bagram. Bagram was located, uh, you all know Bagram is located in Afghanistan close to Kabul and Charikar. And also Bagram was they had the most, I mean, the uh, airport of Af Afghanistan. So the, the Russians used it, the Americans used it. Now I heard that Chinese are using it. <laughs> so next slide, please. <clears throat> oh. This is a details of it, what I was talking, Hercules Epitrapezos with uh, <clears throat> guarding Buddha. Uh, so here's a very interesting other niche. There was three niches next to uh, each other. This is the, ne the next niche uh, next to the Hercules one. Uh, you will see Buddha again and uh, meditation somewhere here can you go to the other slide uh professor this one or oh go to that right there right there good you see here's go to the the next one please yeah the next next yeah next one Next one. You looking for it in the museum? Uh, yeah, this one, right, this one. Just leave it there. Uh oh, no, no, not the museum. That go back to that other slide, please. Go back, Robert. Go yes. back to the other, the other slide. 
No, 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 go back, not front. Forward or back? back. Uh, this is back. Bad. Back. This is back? No, this is yeah. forward. Ah, no, this one here. Go back. Go. Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, okay. So. All right. Yeah. Maybe I can uh, change the the view so that we uh, you can see the the slides in in the On board. The side. Yeah, but I'm not sure whether that would work. Uh, okay, that's it, fine. No, um, anyway, so go to back to the museum. So I will show them the museum, the museum site, the one that paper had papers and burned. This one? The I can't see Can it. See I don't see it. Oh, sorry. Uh, I... All I do, I see you. Oh, you okay. Have to see me. Oh, okay. Now I see. Yeah, I'll I'll have to get. Now I see all of them. Okay. <laughs> um, I have to share again. Sorry about the the techni technology. We already concluded that we were. Yeah, this one. Here. Yeah. So look at what was the condition, or what they have looted. Then the museum. I mean, when the. Mujahideen and, and, and Taliban were there. So this is the archives of museum. So they burn all the papers and everything, the documents. And you can see there is no roof on the museum. So next slide. Robert, next slide. Yeah. You don't see it? No, I did. It's still stuck with the other one. Okay, I'm already at the. That's probably the problem. Is that the the it is delayed? Oh, I see. Yeah, this is how the museum looked uh, when I went to Kabul. You see, there is no windows. There is nothing. No roof. Nothing. So finally, uh, I talked with the Minister of Culture of Greece, and uh, he invited me to uh, Athens at that time. And then he said, what do you want? I said, you know, as a Greek, you should help me to rebuild the museum. He said, OK, I can help, but I can't rebuild. I he can't pay for the, everything. So. I said, whatever you can do. So they sent about $350,000 to UNESCO. So they start rebuilding the museum. And uh, uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, yeah. So they try to rebuild it. And then after that, of course, uh, these are all these uh, data that I told you that that they have, that was born. Uh, so uh, after the Greeks, the, of course, the French, of course, was there. They were technically they were, were helping before the Greeks. And here's a very very important thing that what Taliban did to the artifact of the museum. You see turn pieces, they broke it completely. So my statement was always either in Afghanistan, also when I went and speak about Afghanistan, I spoke about Afghanistan culture heritage. Uh, I always had a slogan, Taliban, you can break it, but as long as I live, I will rebuild it. Uh, so next slide, please. So here is one. This is our uh, museum employee. So he fixed this Buddha, which he did a very, very good 
job. He's actually Robert favorite of Mr. Masudi Shiraz, you remember? <laughs> and uh, he's a technician, restorer. So he fixed this Buddhist uh, Go to the next slide, please. And this is the famous director general of Museum of, of National Museum of Afghanistan, Mr. Masudi, Omar Khan Masudi. This is the Anishka statue, uh, which was also broken by Taliban, but he put it back together. Uh, of course, you can see the construction of the rebuilding of the reconstruct the Museum of Kabul. Uh, it wasn't before like that when I went there. So please, the next slide. That was it. Oh, yeah. Here's a very, very uh, interesting picture. Uh, this is Professor Sirianidis, who is a Greek Russian guy. Of course, he, I, when I went to Afghanistan, we found the Telotapa uh, artifacts at the vault. So I invited him to come to back to Kabul. And this is the day that actually we opened those uh, safes to see if the Telotapa artifacts are, uh, and, and, and fact is intact and has not been touched. So, and this is Dr. Raheen, who was the Minister of uh, Culture in Afghanistan, and some other employees from the bank. And this is it. Next slide, please. So these are the Tilotapa artifacts. So and we were sitting for hours and hours and hours counting all these goals to find out how many are those. Uh, and these are not really, they are from the clothes of six people, which was one prince and actually a uh, princess. Uh, so that was fall down from the opinion and they found it, Professor Sinyanis. Next slide, please. This is also an Aphrodite gold, which of course, this is a typical local at that time uh, figure. Uh, so this is also on Tilata, found at Tilatapa. Next, please. Can you go to next slide, please? Yeah. And this is the famous crown of the princess. Uh, uh, let me tell you how Professor Serianidis found this Tilatapa. I mean, we knew there was something there. He knew there was something, but there was a lot of, I mean, it was a six tomb. From the tomb, every one of them, there was mice was coming out and then bringing with them the gold. <laughs> they were trying to eat it. So that was one of the reasons. So he just went and excavated right there. So, and this crown was, I mean, was also folding. So he found this one and he, he folded it and he put it somewhere there and that was looking at it and he couldn't find it. He forgot that he has been folded and mm -hmm. it was putting it there. So he was very worried about that. That's always, I remember that. Next, please. And these are also, uh, uh, artifacts from 
a lot of uh, and you can see all these gold and the, the very expensive uh, stones which found in Afghanistan, Feroza that you call it. So, and you can see the two figures right there, uh, which is also typical on the local uh, tradition. It doesn't have anything related to the Greek uh, Hellenistic time, but maybe some influence. Next, please. And this is also some of the founding works from Tilatapa. You'll see also. Next, please. Next. Okay, this is the very, very famous ivories of Bagram. Uh, these ivories was found in, uh, I think, Chilin Berger. So I said he found it in Bagram. Uh, we all thought that Bagram was actually, there is from the history and from the ancient time that Bagram was also an Alexandria. So we found this, and we all thought that this was an Alexandria, but it was a warehouse that all these artifacts were came from somewhere, like from India, from Alexandria at that time, from Egypt. These were like gifts that was given to that to at that time. So please go to the next. Yeah, this is another ivory that from background. I'm not gonna go in details from that who she is and who she is not, because otherwise we're gonna probably gonna be here about 10 o'clock. So I'm just gonna review it quickly so uh, that you can see. And these are all some fish also from background, very famous. Go ahead, please, next, next, okay. Now, Afghanistan culture heritage side. You know that this is all looting. Everybody was, looting the sides and everything else. And I was just wondering, what should I do? What should I do? What should I, what can I do? So finally, uh, I created an archeological police with 400 police. And uh, so it, it did work for a while, but other than after a while, they started also helping people to go loot the uh, sites. So I thought, what should we do? This is not working. And I thought uh, with you, uh, Professor Parthesis, I said, you know what? Let's do something else, although it's going to be very difficult. Build museums and provinces. Get the Afghan people involved. Get the family, get the children involved. We actually had a, uh, with Masuri, we tried it at the Kabul Museum. Uh, we found with very difficulties two buses or one buses that our Khan Foundation gave it to us. And then we went to schools and bring the kids to the museum. And uh, the guides at the museum, and sometimes I went there, sometimes Masudi was there, and then we were killing, and they were amazed that, oh, ah, you are very good. And then one day I went there and I said, you know what, these are all yours. It's belonged to you. It's not belonged to me. I just kept it, safeguarded for you. And they were amazed. You know, slowly they went to their parents 
Uh, so they brought that the day. Some parents came. They said, oh, my kid says this and that. So I thought that that was a very good strategy. So we started on that. And slowly we built some museums and at the province, like one in the Bonyan, there was a museum in Mazar, which was we actually completely reconstructed, not reconstructed, restored it. Then, for example, the Bogajan Nama, which was a place that uh, you helped us, and then people went there and people studied there, people was went for picnic. And so what was the whole thing is that was these kids had influenced their family. And of course, the parents had brought some other friends. So that started. And I thought that it was a very, very good uh, uh, act to do this. So let's go, please, to the next slide. So, you know, these are all part of the looting. And, and, and so that people were trying to I mean, sell it and people in the mafia of the archaeological sites or a big mafia. So next, please. Next slide. Yeah. And see how they are selling coins <laughs> and how the other people, these are some of our uh, friends and he's from France. He, he went to uh, somewhere and then he bought a golden coin of Alexander the Great. So this is how the loot was started and how we kept it, bring it back to the museum. Next words, next slide, please. Okay, this is the, I believe it's the Bomyan. Uh, go to the next one, please. Next, please. Next. And these are some stupas and cobble that was looted, destroyed, and then we rebuilt it. Next, please. And this is another stupa that was, you can see here and there, they're looting. Uh, I don't know if you all know stupas. Uh, it's in Buddhist uh, culture. So next, please. And this is the Bomyan site. Please next. And the next one, please. Here are the, yeah, the two Buddhas. This is how Taliban destroyed the culture heritage of Afghanistan and they, with the diamond, they blow that boat of the Buddhas. So, but fortunately with the help of UNESCO and as well, uh, the help of Japanese, who we, re uh, struck the, the structures. So the structures were fixed, but there was always a debate, should we go and rebuild those Buddhas? My opinion was this, no, because we cannot reconstruct it. It takes a lot of time and then as an archaeologist for me it was going to be something that I did or some engineers did it. So it is better to leave it the way it is and of course the museum in Bomyan has been built so that fractures from these two uh, 
uh, Buddhas were putting into the Buddhas down on his under the knee, and he's under their foot. So, and then we did actually a documentary and then how we had from old pictures and everything that how those two Buddhas looked before. So this is before March 21. This is March 21, the day after that day, after that. These two are the before, and this one is after that, what they blow that. So for me it was to keep these two sides to teach the Afghan young generation that this was the darkest history of Afghanistan, the darkest time of history of Afghanistan. But today, unfortunately, after 20 years, we have them back. Uh, next one, please. And this is also, this is what you see. And this is the workers that they were Italian uh, workers and Germans. To, for the structure, they were fixing some of the things. Next one, please. And next. And this is the team demodeling. I was trying to say that team modeling is also another uh, thing to do in Bomiyan. Next, please. Yeah, this is the before and the after. Next one, please. Yeah, this is the val valley of uh, Bobnyan. Next. Okay, here it is something that you all will tell me what it is. It is a two Afghani note. Afghani money uh, that even now it is it's there. So I went inside and then tried to. I saw that uh, sign over there, and then I said, "What is what might be there?" So I looked at it, and I this picture. It says Vasileos Megalo Efkratidu. So this is how the Hellenistic influence is today in Afghanistan. I remember I came to, uh, uh, in 2011 or 10, the Speaker of Parliament of Greece came and I showed him. He says, can you, and then he invited me here so that he said that, can you bring about 200, 250 of them or 300? It was one Afghani, so I just bought it and I brought it here. They invite me at the Greek parliament and I went and gave it back to everybody, to everybody, one of this. And then I put one on the slide. I said, thank you very much for inviting me, but shame on you. And everybody was surprised what I said. I said, you know what? You change your drachma to euro. But in Afghanistan, we keep still your money. <laughs> so everybody loved it. So next, please. So this picture is a famous hero of Afghanistan, Wazir Akbar Khan. And I put it there, what next? Uh, what next? I don't know. I don't know what next. What is well, going to happen? Maybe we can we can explore that together. What next? If if what you don't next? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs>
Thank you, thank you so much for your uh, for your you know your guided tour through the the long, long, long history of Afghanistan, but also the many uh, challenges that you faced. And I know you know in the many conversations we had that it is not that are not new challenges because you know the value how to value your cultural heritage if you don't feel that it is your cultural heritage is one or if it is uh, just silenced. Um, one one of the things that that I I was was wondering when when you when you asked the question what next, maybe to look back a little bit uh, at the, the twenty years that uh, that you and and many others uh, had had uh, tried uh, had shaped up policies uh, and not just policies about protecting uh, the, uh, the, the 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 traces of the past but also. As I said, the human infrastructure and the intangible heritage. Well, one of the things I, I know that was very close to your heart was also music. So, um, what what in those twenty years uh, was were, were the things that you were most proud of that you achieved uh, uh, of your policies? Uh, when I went in two thousand two, Afghanistan had a broken TV state TV station. So we work it out. So it started. Uh, but before the Taliban came, you know how many TV stations was private, 70 or 80? The freedom of speech. Maybe the government was corrupt. I'm not saying that it was not corrupt. Maybe there were very, very, a lot of corruption was there. But one thing, at least people could have talked. People could have finger point on who has been stolen things or who has been taking bribe from Afghans. The other thing is that all those young generation in 20 years that they have been went to school, high school, and some finished university. You cannot change those people. They have learned the beauty, beauty of democracy. You cannot change it. As some people ask me, uh, Taliban has, born, has, has changed from 20 years ago. I said, no, Taliban has not changed, but people of Afghanistan has changed. So yeah. these are the things that I'm proud, the things that we all do together. We did it, training Afghans, training the museum people, training the uh, engineers and and and, and uh, uh, monuments, ancient monuments, training in archaeology, training in the music, music, music. We had a music institute of music. So these are make me to be proud. I'm not saying that I have done it. I have done it with a team teamwork because you cannot do anything by one you cannot do anything by gun it is all you have to do work together and as i said through culture we have done a lot yeah so i uh, i keep on i keep on saying that you know i was uh, participant in in that enormous effort that that I saw that the Afghan were doing and I I remember and and, and maybe that's an, a, a scene to remember uh, what will happen hopefully with that infrastructure is when when you, when you asked me and Dr Masudi asked me to 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 help to develop a museum in the north. And uh, you know it was just a building when we started and the first steps were. Uh, for the team to sit down with the local community and after well I think a year of talking they came up with a plan and of course the framework was to establish a museum that shows the, the regional cultural heritage that shows the the, the long the roots but what struck me still till the day to today is that the, the decision was to first 
reconstruct the gardens around the palace. So, uh, and and for 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 your know, Western eyes, that was something like, oh yes, well you know that's the landscaping <laughs> you do at the end of the <laughs> museum. And then you know I also I also remember that um, they they make the plan and had to defend it uh, at your desk and then uh, at other desks and they said we want to send also the public toilet specialist and the public the public toilet uh, manager and I thought gee these are guys that 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 uh, organized themselves a trip to Kabul but no 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 they said listen these are actually the most important people well because the function of the garden was not was, just a garden it was the stopover for travelers it was you know the, the meeting place for the community and the way they then reconstructed the walls and the, the, the reconstructing also the uh, the uh, the craftsmanship and and for me, that was a very imp impressive process as an archaeologist that you first focus on the collection and then on the museum. And then, you know, this was the other way around and the educational programs that, that, that you were referring to. So yeah. what, how, how do you see, uh, what is the, the biggest threat now? Because we know that the young people were passionate. I, I, I remember that a lot of women were also, you know, very passionate and, and, and traditionally they are keepers of so many uh, traditions and um, yeah, the silent force in, in the world. How, how, how do you see um, that developing? Uh, or is it difficult to say how it will develop? But do you, you know, feel that they will be a force in, this, uh, uh, in, in, in the resilience against um, going back to old times? I believe so. Uh, they are trying to force them. But you see those uh, brave young women, young girls, they are resisting. They are getting the flat and they are protesting. Uh, I'm hoping, and I always, as I say, if there is tomorrow, there is hope. Mm. So I hope all of these not going to happen because Afghan, after all these 40 some years, they deserve to have a peaceful life. Uh, but you never know. I mean, yeah. as, I, as I told you that I'm dreaming, I'm just in dreams. That how can we go and give back? After 20 years of all these in initiatives, all its hard work, back to Taliban. Yeah. This is uh, something uh, unbelievable, and it's un yeah. I, I can't believe it. Yeah. But uh, as you say, we will try our best to help it, and we will see. Yeah, it's, it's, we, we talked a little bit before we, we, we went live and um, um, we, you know, we spoke about um, how people are safe or not safe. And so we, we also, this is maybe also the disclaimer on the, the when we go to the, uh, the Q&A, when we open the Q&A that uh, we, we, you know, we're very happy to announce that everybody we work with so far we know are safe that is not the case for everybody in the culture sector but uh, for the people that i mentioned uh, but it's also for obvious reason that they are not here on the panel uh, because you know the times are too uncertain and and omar sultan is brave enough to uh, and, and, and driven enough to 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 be the spokesperson uh, we there is also very little we can say about so many initiatives that are taking place behind uh, the scenes uh, there is, of course, and I see that already in the chat, concerns about the whereabouts of all kinds of things we, that, that are things that are not wise to discuss. Um, also, you know, it's, it's interesting, that's my last question before we open uh, the, the Q&A for the public is, there was so many um, international support from so many sites. And I, I also remember that, um, or not only remember it, I think it was a very important point in 2016, when here in Abu Dhabi, the international community came together to have the Abu Dhabi Declaration for the protection of cultural heritage in, in war zones. And I know our own uh, vice chancellor, uh, Mariette Westerman, is in, in the board of, of the organization that came out of that. And I, I know that behind the scenes, a lot of efforts are taking place to help 
uh, there are things we can't discuss in public, but um, in general form, um, how can the international community still um, contribute? Um, you know, there are from many sides, you just mentioned Japan, Japan, Korea, China is a force that is undeniable for the positive and for the negative. You, 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 you had to struggle with them with copper mines. How can the international community be of help for Afghanistan right now? You mean all over or just for the culture? But all over, I will say. I, I think just how to support the Afghan people uh, and support well, I think, the culture. I, I think I think that the, that the international community can do a lot, uh, which means don't take any quick decision to recognize them, the Taliban government. Put pressure on them for the education of girls and put pressure that the woman can work together next to the male man. And uh, girls and women can go to, I mean, girls can go to school and go to uh, university. So this is, I guess, is very, very important to Push and push and push. Then for the archaeological things, and then try the international to implement that war, safe war, and in the war time, uh, the cultural heritage. That's, uh, I hope that they will do that because with the international government, I mean, they they can push. I'm I'm sure with your with your uh, passionful presentation of the cultural heritage and what I, that that is certainly a contribution uh, for the awareness. Uh, with your permission, shall I ask Alia to come online and to um, uh, start the Q and A from the public? Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Marcel. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation. And um, as you can imagine, many of the questions are overlapping um, with some of the things you've already mentioned, but I will try to be a little bit more precise with some of the questions. I will tell the audience that they are, some of them are asking about the location of certain treasures um, and that is something we can't discuss. Um, so, but we do have a couple of questions about um, about the question uh, about the location of uh, the situation of the museum right now. Is it open? Um, and the heritage sites, the archaeological sites where there are digs happening, is all of that frozen now? Is the museum closed? Um, those are the, that that sums up a couple of the questions we have. I think the museum is closed. Uh, but I have uh, news that, that they haven't touched the museum, so it is closed. Uh, about the archaeological sites, you never know if it has been looted or not, but I haven't heard anything, uh, to be honest with you, that has been looted or not, but I keep uh, close eyes on that and then I don't know. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> but the museum is safe right now. Okay. Um, and it's uh, and and it is something that the, is being. Well, I'm going to pass on that question. Let me ask you another one of the questions here. Um, there's a question about the network of museums that were being built in the provinces. Um, and you mentioned that in your talk. And someone is saying they spoke with Mohammed Fahim Rahimi. And um, he told them uh, that such a project was ongoing. And um, do you have any updates on the how far along you were able to get before the Taliban with the idea of the provincial museums? How many were there? 
were there or were in the process of being built in the network? Uh, before Taliban, uh, I think it was 11 museums uh, on the network. Uh, I think it's in Mazar, uh, Kandahar, Ghazni, uh, uh, Jalalabad, uh, uh, Herat, um, Herat, I said, and Balkh, I said, so, and Bamiyan as well. Yeah. But uh, right now, I think it is, according to Mr. Rahimi, everything is intact. So I don't know. I don't think so that is now it's working because everything's, uh, I mean, the museum is closed. How are you going to have those that work? Okay. Um, there are a lot of, there's some questions coming in about artists. Um, and so I'll read one of the questions verbatim. It sums up a lot of the questions. A, mu a museum is an important repository of valuable objects and the culture. With such an unpredictable situation, nation's archaeologists and artists function as its most valuable keepers of memory. Um, are there efforts to create a living history between the two groups, between the archaeologists and the artists? Um, and particularly the musicians you mentioned. I know you have a particular interest in music and, and perhaps some of the artisans. Um, and I believe that would be a lot of the women involved in heritage. Sure. You see, we had theater, we had the Afghan film, we were all supporting them. Uh, unfortunately, right now, the Director General of uh, Afghan Film escaped Afghanistan. Uh, I don't know about the theater because the theater was an Afghan uh, fellow Afghan who was uh, studied in Kabul University Theater. Uh, and the artist, uh, the painters, the movie theaters, the, the everybody. I, I love them, you know, and the musicians. Uh, the mu Music Center of Music Institute of Afghanistan has been closed officially by Taliban. Uh, Afghan film is still there. And then I saw that there was a guy from the Talib guy is now the director general. Theater, I don't know. Uh, so we should protect every one of them. Not, neither, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that the museums or the archeologists or the Institute of Art. I see them in all when I an eye, one eye. Okay, that uh, it's not different that I see the artists differently. I see that thing. I, there, I love every one of them. They're part of my life and culture. Um. And there's a lovely comment here by someone who's actually been um, visited the Music Institute um, th there and saying how much you, how, how wonderful the people um, sure. there were. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, wow. We have a student from the from City University in Hong Kong who wow. is asking a question, and I will read it verbatim. I'm recently studying a reading, World Heritage Shield or Target by Dario Gamboni, that talks about the Buddhas of Bamiyan. Have the, Afga have the Afghanistan government ever tried to nominate the Buddhas of Bamiyan to the World Heritage List in order to protect it? If not, why not? Is it really due to the failure, failure of obtaining rec the recognition of the United Nations, the, re the reason mentioned by the writer? Uh, I don't know if he is aware of it. Thank you for the question, but uh, Buddha sites was already in culture heritage of world. It has been selected in 1983, I believe so, yeah. It is, yeah. Iraq used to be in culture heritage site, but then they were kicked it off. 
in the uh, but going on is there. Yeah, it is a cultural heritage site of UNESCO. Not sure where I'm not aware of this reading that he's re referencing. Why it would say otherwise, but um, and we have some questions also. I'm mindful of the time. And monarch um, of Jom is there too. Monarch of Jom, mm -hmm. uh, also in uh, UNESCO Culture Heritage World. I mean, World Culture Heritage. Okay. Um, how many World Heritage sites are there in Afghanistan? How many what? Um, UNESCO World Heritage sites are there in Afghanistan? Two. two. These two. Okay. Yeah. These two. Um, so, um, someone here is asking, um, uh, what are the challenges to national heritage in Afghanistan in light of the tribal and ethnic divides that have developed over the 50 years of civil wars? I guess the question. Uh, yeah. I think I have uh, answered that, but I will try to tell you or tell him again that, as I told that Afghans are from different ethnic, different tribes, but when it comes to their culture heritage, they are one. So they are united because of their culture heritage. I mean, it's one of the reasons. Uh, so I believe, yeah, this is this is true. So it hasn't been a source of division. It's been the opposite. It's been a source of bringing people. The together. source of division has been started when actually the Russian and the Russian was there or uh, in Mujahideen, actually. But when the first and 20 years ago, when, uh, when the government of Afghanistan like it was selected or was made, uh, they were from the every different ethnic groups. They were include Pashtun, they were Tajiks, they were uh, Panjshiris, they were Uzbeks, they were everybody else at, at, the, at that government. Uh, but as I told you that culturally for in Afghanistan, and I told you the stories at the museum and everything, when it comes to culture, Afghans are crazy about their cultures and they are united. I, if I may just add to, I, I remember one of those conversations that when that you said when you when you came from high school uh, that you you know you um, you had no idea who you was when people were talking about Pashtun or what others you said yeah. I don't know I'm Afghan. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that was the same thing, exactly, yeah. That was that time. You were right. Thank you for rem reminding me that. Yeah. No, yeah, I, even, I even remember that you had the conversation with the kids <laughs> about it, but uh, let not trigger you to tell those stories. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we have another question here. Um, somewhat interest, uh, interesting. Should heritage be considered as part of the humanitarian crisis? Considering the amount of people leaving the diaspora, who will take care of these sites, um, which represented employment as well? Well, I think they should. They should. It should be done that. Because uh, uh, National of Museum of Afghanistan, it says, uh, Robert, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that was, I guess, Masuri's famous things to say. A nation lives uh, culture or history, but a nation, yeah. If a nation doesn't have culture and history, that's not a nation. Yeah, I think I will. I will look up the the, the exact yeah, quote, the, the, the but uh, quote, yeah. Yeah. but I think it is um, when an, um, when a, a people the nation dies when the people um, I can even share the quote. It's yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of questions I'm trying to sort through. Um, uh, um, um, ah, there's another one um, about Afghanistan was an important part of the Silk Road. Focus has now shifted to a more similar contemporary road, the China Belt One Road. How has that impacted Afghanistan's heritage sites or heritage? Uh, you know that, uh, I mean, the Silk Roads was always there. I mean, uh, uh, the one thing that when I left from Afghanistan and was no longer the deputy minister, the China at the UNESCO got the advantage of Silk Road, which I was always arguing with the government that it is not right for only China to claim the Silk Road. Uh, yes, the, the, they built the, the, the road there now. Uh, so I don't know how that much is gonna affect, okay? Uh, they they built the train, the railroad, so that they'll come from Afghanistan and to China, Afghanistan, and then go to Europe, uh, to through the Soviet Union. I mean, Russia, and then to Turkey and Europe. I don't know how much effect that will have. I think that is more economically important. I doubt that that one has anything to do with the culture. Culture important. Um, that's good then. Um, they um, there's a couple very specific questions, um, and then one is about uh, international security and in museums. Um, should museums around the world be warned about illicit traffic um, for as a result of this recent current? or we should say current situation. Um, are, are you concerned about looting um, happening now? And is this something international security should be made aware of or has been made aware I, of? I think every one of them are aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or what they will do, it depends uh, if the Taliban is gonna come in agreement with them. Uh, but I think they should push these things uh, to to the museum, National Museum, to be all of it, and it's be secure. So that security of the of the National Museum should be an international effort. Is that what you're saying? I don't know if you can put that one international. I mean, how much international, uh, let's put it this way, how much international organization have that power to do that? Uh, how much, put it this way, like UNESCO can do? In my opinion, none, zero. But, uh, who knows? I, I really don't know how to, uh, but if, if the organization is the national, I mean, international organization is a powerful, why not? But how much they will help? I think one of the problems with, with these kind of actions is that you, you know, the uh, again, the collection, but, but are you saving? Are you saving a collection? Or are you saving the, the the culture and the cultural infrastructure? By the by the way, the nation stays alive when the culture stays alive. That was the yeah, the, a nation the, stays the alive. Museum. Yeah, that's the, uh, even offline uh, by coincidence. But no, I, I I if you if I think if you think about, for instance, you know, safe saving collections uh, outside uh, of Afghanistan. What what are you really doing? You know that is that is a difficult uh, discussion. And, and of course, it's important those collection stay safe. But aren't we, you know, discussing this also worldwide? When the British museums and, and other museums saying, see that we were right to safeguard all those collections during the colonial times. Otherwise, 
they would have gone lost. That's a difficult, that is a very difficult discussion. And for me, uh, you know, my stake always in this kind of collaboration is to facilitate how um, the, let's say, the, the intellectual connection between, you know, people that are taking care of their, their culture through curating collections to um, uh, doing museums, that is a more important safeguarding. Uh, for the the culture on the longer term than just uh, re, you know than just safeguarding collections itself, uh, I, I you know one of the things that I find always uh, inspiring both in Afghanistan but in other parts of the world is that capacity building means not just uh, training people in a technical sense. Of course, yes, we 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 did train a lot of people, but facilitating their uh, uh, their way of educating. If, if, if we if we look at Afghanistan, the educational programs had a really huge outreach because it was organized by the school teachers themselves. And and I think and, and my hope is that you know by the the program of the last twenty years uh, that that uh, cultural infrastructure of education and saying okay you know there are more important things maybe in um, in the short run, but on the long run. Your cultural identity and and you you know your 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 what 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 connects you to your your country and your space uh, will prevail. I, I I'm I'm pretty sure about that. And the question is how ugly it will get. But the the saving is in the people. And and one of the concerns is also you know the bane the, the and, and I know the Taliban used that as an argument. So I'm I'm reluctant to say it, but we have to say we have to be careful that that Afghanistan is not losing all its people. Uh, if that is to get them in safety, okay. But for the longer run, those people like yourself, uh, Omar Sultan, you you went back to 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 Afghanistan after the civil war. Uh, so many, you know, and and that is, I think, what the international community can 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 help with is even if people get disconnected from their collection. Uh, yeah, for argument's sake, collection gets into safety. How can we get those curators in the National Museum in Kabul supported so that they, their knowledge about the collection can, can be uh, continued? That is one of the things that we discussed in extens. how in, in times of emergency, how can you uh, take care of the people behind the collection and make sure that that connection between collection and the curators and the knowledge about that collection, those collections are worthless if you don't have the human brain and the human passion behind it sorry that took me off on none <laughs> um, <Yeah, so>. thank <laughs> you um, I, I i think alia are there are there more questions um i think i have just i'm going to combine a couple of questions into a final question but before that um is there's a very specific question that was asked here and if you have an easy answer for it any word on the minaret of, of jam and if it has survived the earthquakes, floods, etc. Uh, as far as I know, as uh, the day before yesterday, yes, it is survived. Okay. Yeah. So Monarch of Jom, that's why I'm saying that Monarch of Jom is also on the world culture heritage. Okay. Oh, and it's yeah. still in good condition. Um, it's always had the problem of the flooding and this and that, but way we try to safeguard it. And then I know you've uh, spent a lot of time with us. So the final question is, I'm going to mix several questions together, but the essence of them is um, about uh, um, about the, re the refugees leaving Afghanistan and uh, uh, or becoming refugees, I should say, or, and um, the diaspora. Um, and uh, and what so what role do they play in preserving and consuming Afghanistan heritage? And what role do they and how do we help them? Or how does the Afghanistan people help each other remember the heritage and culture um, with this refugee situation and um, with the diaspora? Uh, I tell you this, uh, I was part of that in 1978 when the first communist regime came in Afghanistan and I fled Afghanistan and I stayed one year here in Greece and then went to America and I was like 40 years old there. Afghans 
I think with their culture, heritage, or with their culture, they will never forget Afghanistan or their country, where they came from. Uh, there's ways that they can, they want to go out because they want to save their life. It is uh, difficult to tell them not to because it is every human being's choice to select their future. Of course, it costs Afghan, Afghanistan. It costs that they will uh, not in Afghanistan, but at least they are safe somewhere else and they have the hope to go back to Afghanistan. If they stay there, there might be dangerous. They might not be alive. And ways of helping Afghans. I tell you one thing, uh, from my experience right now here in Greece, I go and talk with the refugees. I remind them from where they are what culture they have, and then also remind them what culture the Greeks has. Because somehow it's those two cultures are conflict because the way they, they lived in Afghanistan and the way the Greeks lives here. So that will help the society. That will help the refugees because when the Afghan refugees goes out, a lot of people says, oh, they are not good people. They are fighting or they are doing this or that. It is not their fault. It's nobody's fault. I mean, they have been forced to be a refugee. They have been forced to get out of Afghanistan. But we need to help them. We have to recognize their status. But the question was that how they can help. They will go one day to Afghanistan, sooner or later. As Robert remind me, a nation who has history, <laughs> that, is, that is something very important. And that's, I hope that that, that will solve their problem. Well, I think on, on those, maybe uh, not, there are uplifting words, but there are under, uh, you know, heavy circumstances. And we, we wish everybody, uh, I see in the chat so many friends that are online and following your, uh, your talk and uh, wishing all the best also to the colleagues in, uh, in, um, in uh, Afghanistan. And um, I hope that this talk, um, uh, I realize how difficult it is, but I hope that it still has contributed to the awareness, not only uh, about the difficult situation, the people and the politics and the economy is in, but also uh, how rich the, the heritage is and that it is that culture that can maybe create again, future for, for the people and give them their, their, you know, their roots and how their roots should stay. Um, thank you so much for this talk. Alia, thank you very much for uh, um, uh, doing the Q&A and thank you for all the people that sent the questions. I, I, I must say I always have difficulties to read the, the chat that we can see with all the questions. They were very, very interesting questions. I'm sorry we couldn't answer them all. Um, there is an, uh, a PDF of, an, of a little booklet that we wrote about the project that we did together and if you sent an uh, an email to Dekera, uh, the Dekera Center at NYU or the Heritage Studies at NYU, um, then, then we'll be happy to share that PDF with you. Um, for now, uh, Omar Sultan, um, our best wishes are with you and we hope soon, soon, soon to invite you back in, in, uh, in Abu Dhabi and uh, have some workshops to, uh, together with the students and with other colleagues to find out more about the best way forwards and uh, how to help Afghanistan and, and the, the rich culture to, to survive. Thank you so much. I thank thank you, you to the audience. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Alia. Thank you, Naid. Thanks, everybody. So 
I really enjoyed talking with you all. Thank you. And I hope I have been answered some of your questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.